Welcome to another patho video. Today let's talk about celiac disease. Celiac disease is known by several different names, including celiac sprue, non-tropical sprue, and gluten sensitive enteropathy. Celiac disease is one of the most common genetic diseases worldwide, with a prevalence of about 1%. Which part of the gastrointestinal tract is most affected by celiac disease? It mainly affects the duodenum and the proximal jejunum. The disease process begins with gluten. So where is gluten found anyway? Of the following foods, can you determine which contain gluten? Please pause the video briefly now and think of your answer. Here's a hint. Three of them contain gluten. If you selected wheat, barley, and rye, then you are correct. Gluten is a major storage protein found in wheat, barley, and rye and imparts properties to flour that make it ideal for bread making. Gluten is made up of glutenins, represented by the long filaments, and gliadin, represented by the curved shaped violet structures. Gliadins endow viscosity, or thick and sticky properties, to wheat flour dough, whereas glutenins are mostly responsible for elasticity and the cohesive strength of dough. Gliadin is the bad guy that triggers the immune response in genetically sensitive individuals. It is a polypeptide of 33 amino acids in length that is a fraction of the gluten molecule that is particularly important in the pathogenesis of celiac disease. Gliadin is resistant to degradation by gastric pepsin and proteases in the small intestine. The destruction in the digestive tract that results from celiac disease is immune system mediated and is caused mostly by T cells that have become activated when sensitive individuals are exposed to gluten. It attacks the cells that line the digestive tract called enterocytes. Pathogenesis of celiac disease. Let's talk about the specifics of how gluten can activate the immune system to bring about damage to the small intestine. As mentioned, gliadin is a portion of gluten that is particularly di difficult to digest. Gliadin exposure increases the release of zonulin a protein that modulates the permeability of tight junctions between enterocytes lining the digestive tract. Zonulin appears to work by engaging the chemokine receptor CXCR3. It is known that CXCR3 is overexpressed in patients with celiac disease. Zonulin binding CXCR3 triggers a second messenger system that results in disengagement of the protein zona occludens from the tight junctional complex. This results in an increase in intestinal permeability, allowing gliadin to enter the lamina propria. Gliadin also induces enterocytes of the small intestine to release IL-15. IL-15 and interleukin triggers proliferation and activation of intraepithelial lymphocytes, abbreviated here as IEL. When these CD8 positive lymphocytes become activated, they begin to express NKG2D receptors. The ligand for NKG2D is MYC-A that is expressed on the surface of enterocytes. 
MCA is expressed by enterocytes under conditions of stress, such as during bacterial infections or with cancer. In certain individuals, gliadin exposure itself may also increase enterocytes to express more MCA. NKG2D MCA engagement will trigger the IEL to kill the enterocyte by releasing granzymes and perforins to bring about cell lysis. Once gliadin gains access to the lamina propria, it is deamidated by the enzyme tissue transglutaminase. The deamidation process removes an amide group yielding deamidated gliadin, which is even more immunogenic than gliadin. It is then further processed by an antigen presenting cell and presented most commonly by the MHC class II receptor HLA-DQ2 or HLA-DQ8 to the CD4 positive T helper cells. This interaction results in stimulation of the helper T cell and production of cytokines, which contribute to tissue damage. T helper cells also activate B cells that produce antibodies against tissue transglutaminase or TTG, gliadin, and endomysium. Measurement of these antibodies in the blood is part of the diagnostic process for celiac disease. What about morphological changes of the small intestine observed in celiac disease? In the healthy small intestine, enterocytes are organized to form villi and crypts. With celiac disease, there are some changes that happen to this normal structure. The villi will disappear, and this is called villus blunting. The dotted line shows where the villus used to be. You may imagine that the loss of villi would decrease the amount of surface area for absorption of nutrients from the small intestine. The epithelial cells and the lymphocytes of the crypt divide, and this causes crypt elongation. Please remember these three morphological changes seen in celiac disease. One, villus blunting. Two, IEL proliferation, and three, crypt elongation. Damage to the enterocytes often leads to clinical features, such as diarrhea, bloating, and chronic fatigue. Celiac patients may also present with anemia due to lack of iron, folate, or vitamin B12 absorption. In children with celiac disease, this may lead to delayed puberty or short stature. Since celiac disease activates the immune system and causes proliferation of intraepithelial lymphocytes, there is an increased risk of cancer that comes with the disease. Furthermore, because enterocytes of the crypt are activated to divide, there is an increased risk for the development of small intestinal adenocarcinoma. The only current treatment available for celiac disease is a gluten-free diet. So avoid foods containing wheat, barley, and rye, or other foods that have been contaminated with these during processing. Adherence to a gluten-free diet allows the intestinal mucosa to completely heal. Thanks for watching.